Hi, I'm Max. And I'm Skylar. Recently, we decided to start watching Bob's Burgers to see what it was all about. And it didn't take us long to become completely obsessed with the show. But one of the things we love the most about the show is the brilliant end credit sequences. Which is why we created this podcast. Each week, we're going episode by episode to talk about the elaborate end credits. We're excited to have you join us right here on Bob's Credits. We'll make sure the Bob's Burgers end credits get the credit they're due. All right! Is someone getting the best, the best, the best chip chip baroo? No? You're looking at me like I just... I don't know what that is. You don't know that Foo Fighters song? No. Best of You? No. You don't know that? I told, I tell you this all the time. I have huge pop culture blackouts. You know, you know Best of You. You know Foo Fighters songs. You know Dave Grohl. Biscuit's biting my hands. (laughs) I do know Dave Grohl. Yeah. You know it. The listeners know it. I know they know it. And now wanna, I feel so embarrassed. Does anyone want to drop in to um, our DMs and give Skylar a hard time for not knowing? Shame best of me. You? Publicly yeah, shame, shame me. My, yeah. <laughs> Call her out. Uh, I mean, I, th- I feel like I've said this before, but this is a moment of growth for me that I just admit to not knowing something because I've just spent my whole life pretending to know things so I wouldn't be ridic- ridiculed. So. Oh, so you didn't like just like bob your head like, ah, oh, yeah, I love, that's a good uh, no, chip chip or cover of, that, of <laughs> that song, my favorite song. Uh, what's the name of it again, Max? Yeah, you oh, like kind of hum along. It, there's an art to it. You have to not just be like, oh, yeah, you have to give a little bit more detail that you know it. But not too much that you make a fool of yourself. I see. I see what you're saying. Biscuit's squeaking his toy already and he's getting in trouble. We, what people don't see is <laughs> that we set up a nice bed for Biscuit and he gets so amped at the very beginning of our recordings. Skylar's taking a picture or a, a video, video, a video so we can post it um, this week he's when we post going this wild. episode. <laughs> yeah, he just goes nuts. He's He pulled out the, the, the pillow from his bed and now he's just in there going nuts. He gets so excited when we start recording and then just crashes about four and a half minutes into it. I, I think what happens is like when I walk him in the morning, I stop. I don't talk on my phone ever anymore. Oh my gosh, he's wild. Um, Because he knows when my attention isn't 100% on him and he acts like a maniac if I was on the phone. So it's the same thing. He sees us sit down and he's like, I want attention now. Yeah. Because he knows we're going to be paying attention to each other, not him. So needy. So needy. Which, which uh, Bob's, uh, which Belcher child would you say Biscuit is most like? Gene? I feel like we may have done this before, but. Gene? Who needs the most attention? Gene? I think probably Louise needs the most attention. That's why Louise acts out. So maybe yeah. he's more like Louise, which is why for Halloween, Biscuit wore Louise's ears. All right. Go look at it's our Instagram. It's all making sense. Bob's credits all on Instagram. Follow us. Yeah. See? Slip it in now instead of later. I'm going to do it later too. Don't wink at me. <laughs> this is a family show. <laughs> Although Linda would be winking at Bob. Oh, yeah. We, we have some... Uh... Is this the right episode? Yeah, we have some sex toys in this episode. Yeah, this is, yeah, the sex toys are making it. We'll, we'll get into it. They're 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 making a comeback. Yeah, they've already they've already been featured heavily. <laughs> um, should we get into some Bob pun or Max pun? Let's do it. Okay, your first pun is the weekend at Bernays Burger. Oh my gosh, I love this so much, and I'm so sorry, but I just don't think it's yours. I I can't give you credit for that. How it's dare Bob. you? How dare you? It's me. It is? No, it's Bob. <laughs> I don't think you know what a Bernays sauce is. But sometimes I look this stuff up. Yeah. You know what? Next week I'm going to, or like the following week, um, I'm going to come up with something just complete. I'm just going to look up ingredients that I would never come up with and make burgers. Yeah. I well, love now you're going to know. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, you could trick me. Okay. Um, is your it next- Bernays or Bernays? I don't know. I was. I clearly okay. don't know what it was. I was trying to make it sound like Bernie's. So I was going to say Bernie. It's got to be Bernie's, right? If they did the pun. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Um, okay. I'm going to try and sing this one. I'm a zucchini in a bottle burger. You. Yes. I'm going to sing this one too. The 
should I saute or should I mango burger? <laughs> you. Nope. Bob. <laughs> and the final burger is the Great Muppet Capers Burger, topped with capers. That's brilliant. Because it's like, not even like a pun. It no, is a pun, but it's not. Just add an S to the yeah. end of caper. You. Yes. Because you love the Muppets. How can you not love the Muppets? How can you not? They're fantastic. Go go back, everyone, and watch the original Muppet movie and tell me that it doesn't hold up and that you're still amazed that those are puppets and that they managed to get a long shot of Kermit riding a bicycle. How do they do that? That's movie <laughs> magic right there. It is. And we also the recently. jokes. The jokes hold up. The jokes are it was just delightful. They're just great. Just great. Um, I'm not sure how well the Great Muppet Caper holds up, though. I haven't seen that for a while. That's my friend Jazz's favorite. Oh, and okay. Maybe we'll watch it then. Yeah, she watches it, you know, every once in a while. So I think it does hold up. Okay, we're going to watch it right after this. But should we get into this episode a little bit? Let's do it. Those end credits. Okay. Skylar, can we have the title and synopsis for season four, episode four? Please. That's a lot of fours. <laughs> Was that a fake laugh? I think yeah, I just fake laughed very, you. Yeah, because there was nothing that was funny about that. And you just... <laughs> I learned something. I'm learning so many things this week. About yourself? Not about myself. About people in fighters. general. Oh. So in my book that I'm reading about listening, um, about, it's about how we're all horrible listeners and why we need to be better listeners. She... I'm sorry, what did you say? <laughs> No, don't laugh at that. That's like the... (laughs) It's a big laugh again. That's a Muppet joke. Um, So one of the chapters is about fake laughter. And like she asks all these experts on like why do we fake laugh and how can you tell if someone's fake laughing? Number one, women fake laugh like 80% more. I'm not sure I got that stat perfectly right. Than men, which is like classic women. Always, you know trying to make everybody feel comfortable and good. Um, but you can actually tell if someone's fake laughing because there's like they you make an eh sound or you make different sounds at the beginning of a fake laugh. Huh. Like ah ha 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 or ah ha ha ha. Isn't that interesting? Oh, interesting. I'm going to have to pay attention to how you react to me on this episode. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know me. If I'm not cackling, it's probably a fake laugh. That's true. Um, all right. Sorry to derail us. The title is My Big Fat Greek Bob. When Bob takes a job as a chef at a frat house, he begins to fall in love with his new brotherhood. It's all going so well until Dr. Yap, who can't let go of his old fraternity, leads a prank war with the neighboring fraternity. There's a catch, though. It's completely fake, and Dr. Yap takes it way too far in order to hide his secret. Remember the whole shaving his head, beating himself up situation? In the end, Bob saves the day, even if he does end up the victim of Dr. Yap's Operation Spit Take. Meanwhile, Linda helps Gretchen with her lady goods meetings. It turns out Linda has a knack for selling sex toys. Who knew? This episode came out on November 10th, 2013, and was written by Scott Jacobson and directed by Don McKinnon. Thoughts on the episode? Big pause. Uh, Big pause. It's not one that's my favorite. Our classic, our saying, classic line. Yeah, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. It might be unpopular. It is. Oh, yeah. you're gonna say something. Yeah. Okay. I'm not a Doctor Yap fan. I interesting. I'm not, I'm not a big Doctor Yap fan. I don't. I, I like him in bits. Like I like him at dentist visits, but like when they went skiing with him and this this one in particular, like I I kind of like the rest of the episode, and then it becomes too much too much doc, Doctor Yap for me. Definitely. Like, I loved seeing Bob with the boys and he didn't go to college and he's having this like college experience. And like, I thought it when they're singing karaoke together, I think you're right. Like the episode might kind of go a little bit more downhill for me when Dr. Yap enters. Yeah, I just I I just think I need him in smaller doses. Yeah, he's definitely one of the more off-the-wall characters. Like, in this episode, we learn that he's been storing his patients' spit for years, and he has a hidden life at a fraternity. Also, it was really 
interesting writing um, the recap because some most of the time they're like so straightforward in a very satisfying way. But this was really hard to write. And I was like, wait, w- like what was he even trying to do with the fraternity and the like what was the end payoff? Yeah, it was confusing. I still don't even really know. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Do you have any favorite parts about the episode? I, I do like whenever Bob gets to, like, let loose and have a good time. So that's, yes. that's fun. And I love seeing Bob do karaoke. It always just makes me feel a little, like, I, I feel warm and fuzzy inside when Bob gets to have a good time. Because he's always kind of, like, the head of the household, the strict guy. The like, we got to we gotta work. We got to. So whenever he gets to get out of the restaurant and he actually has a good time and lets loose, it's it's fun to watch him do that. And That's I love when he brings the point. kids to the frat house to show it off. And it's just this disgusting house, but they're enamored by it. Like, Louise is like, oh, an upside down couch. That's awesome. <laughs> Fort. Yeah. yeah. To, to hide under. And like. <laughs> yeah. The kids make the episode so much better that they come. And I like Beta. Like, I think like when Bob, you're right, gets the sparkle in his eyes when they're like, do a shot from Beta. He He's like, also you know, his kids don't revere him like these college kids do. So it's also like a satisfying, like Bob gets to have fun, but Bob also gets to be a little bit the hero dad or the cool guy that he wants to be. I don't know. Is that an accurate read? Yeah, no, I totally agree. Yeah. Um, You want some fun facts about this episode? Sure. Well, first of all, it's the most obvious thing is that the title of the episode is a pun or like a play on Mm -hmm. my big fat Greek wedding. But obviously, Greek in this sense is the frat thing. Mm-hmm. Um, some. I thought you were going to start singing. <laughs> I'm, what, what song would I say? You're like, Just um, some. Some. I'm going to. Where over. <laughs> no, I have to pull out another Foo Fighters song, I think. <laughs> Hello, I've been waiting there for you ever long. You know that one? No. Okay. All right. We're going to listen to Foo Fighters for the rest of the day. So at the frat, we meet uh, Turd. Hefty Jeff and Pud, who I think come back at some point. Oh, amazing. From what I remember. The only voice I, the name I recognize uh, is Hannibal Burress does the voice of Hefty Jeff. Love him. He's so funny. Such a distinct, like, kind of like monotone voice. And like the the way he presents himself in movies and film and and TV too. He's just. Wait, what's the favorite, our favorite thing that he's in? I don't know. He's in, he's on the Eric Andre show. We love Eric Andre. Um, oh. he, he was in like Neighbors. He's in all. He's yeah. in that whole, that whole world. Yeah, another um, frat. I mentioned another another fact. You used. I mentioned that Bob sings karaoke, and he's singing "You Ought to Know" by Alanis Morissette. Finally, a song I know. Yeah. Um, which I immediately said to you when we were watching it the other day. I was like, "Oh, that's the same song Kevin chooses to sing at the office Christmas party," which and is it like I'm like so well. It's so it's such a perfect like song for these typically like monotone men, but both yes. Bob and Kevin, because it's such like an, uh, an a- angry, like a uh, feminist anthem, you know? <laughs> Wait, is this the same song that they I don't sing? Mean, I don't mean to say angry feminists. I, I, I want to rephrase that. Shake it off. <laughs> it, it's no, such... you know what? I don't think that you have to apologize for that. I think anger is such a valid emotion and I yeah. think there can be anger in feminism. Well, like I guess I don't want to uh, make, yeah. s- uh, say that feminism is angry necessarily yeah. or like all feminists are angry. Yeah. Well, they're definitely... But that song is very angry. Like she's very... It's like revengeful. Yeah. 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 In a way. Now, I think I have a third karaoke scene with that song. Really? Yeah. It's a great karaoke song. So I know it's I, the same artist, but I'm not sure it's the same song. Book Smart. Do you remember that karaoke scene? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is that the same song? I can't remember. It, it sounds... Uh, yeah. It has to be. It's so interesting because the scene in Book Smart is like... It's it's so good, like cinematically. Like it really makes you feel kind of you're in a dreamy high school party and the song choice is so perfect, but we were like, these high school kids in 2019 are not singing. You ought to know. You ought to know. Yeah, but you're but right. It worked I, just, perfectly. I, I looked it up and you are. That's, that's, that's three. That's so funny. It's such a popular song. We've uncovered the cinematic 
karaoke. We're not karaoke people, so we don't go. So maybe this is like a thing. Maybe it's like you ought to know is kind of like don't stop believing at like a bar that comes over the, you know, that they play to get everyone singing. But if you're at karaoke, if you pull out, you ought to know everyone's going to have a good time. Well, I have a good time watching them. I, s- I remember seeing someone do fee- a Fiona Apple song once uh-huh. at karaoke, and that was a little too much. She's a little <laughs> too too serious. It's not as fun, I don't think. Oh, that's funny. Now <laughs> I'm thinking about the parody of her, um, um, uh, the Bob's... food trucking yeah. episode. Yeah. Yeah. Oil spill. Oh, no, that's that's Tori Amos. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Oil spill. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, so now... Have your ears peeled anytime you see someone singing this karaoke song in TV and movies. Please let us know. Yeah, comes directly to us. We're gonna we're gonna create the ultimate list of yeah. TV characters singing "You Ought to Know" by Alanis Morissette. The world. Needs we're gonna that. we're gonna go uh, buy you ought to know dot com. <laughs> I'm sure that's taken. I bet. Anyway, um, some more fun facts for you. As I mentioned earlier, most of these sex toys that we see in this episode. That Gretchen and uh, Linda are trying to sell were in the sex shop in God Rest Ye Merry Gentle Mannequins from season three. They were featured. They were like on sale in the store, and there were some of the ones that like the kids the released. Stinky Pete. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Like the little like animal characters. I love that. Yeah. So if you want to just, it just they do a good job of keeping this world's, um, I guess, fluid. What's consistent? We Definitely see things. consistent, but like you wouldn't have to keep this consistent, right? It's it's an it's animated more show. like a nod. I am, uh, sometimes I feel like it's just like a nod to the fans. Like I love the shark thing, yeah. The, the dented ice cream, yeah. But this stuff happens, and you have as an animated show, you have the ability to just kind of like without any explanation, like things go back to normal. But certain things they keep, like we said, like the the shark teeth and the ice cream machine the bathroom which still hasn't been redone yet but will be redone mm-hmm. soon and then it's always that like weird chic that like, modern. modern bathroom <laughs> yeah moving forward i didn't know about the sex toys that's amazing yeah it's funny um do you think you'd be good at selling sex toys no i don't linda? know i don't know what i how you sell linda does a great job well i don't know Linda creeps me out when she's trying to... But she sells them. We'll she hear, makes a sale. We're, we'll hear Linda selling the sex toy yeah. at, in, in these end credits here. Yeah. I think the key with that is she... And maybe I, I could take a lesson from Linda in this in, in my life. She has no shame. Like, nothing embarrasses her. And I think that's, like, a superpower. Yeah. We Everything should, embarrasses we should all, me. Yeah, we should all care less about what others think about us the way that Linda... Yep. I mean, she has times where she cares, but... Most of the time, she's she's a pretty free spirit. Yep. And I appreciate that about her. Me too. Um, my only, my last fact is that um, we've mentioned numerous times that uh, one of the illustrators does a script cover just for the cast and crew. Mm-hmm. And on this one, it was apparently kind of like an homage to Animal House with Bob in a in the classic college shirt mm-hmm. holding a bottle of alcohol. Like, oh, uh, that's great. John Belushi. That, I appreciate that. Um, other than that, I'm ready to get into the credits if you are. I am too. Okay. Let's get the last moments before we get into the credits. So Bob has brought his fraternity brothers now back to the restaurant for burgers, but Linda is holding one of her sex toy sale parties in the restaurants. And it's kind of like the perfect matchup for a little party for these boys and for these, um... Cougars. Cougars, yeah. I think the last sex toy... The theme of it was cougars. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah. You're right. So yeah. we'll get the kind of like the kids' reaction to the party that's happening here. And these are not the most uh, popular boys. frat boys. Yeah. yeah. That's right. They're in the le- least popular frat for a reason you see in the episode. <laughs> Woo! Tonight everybody gets paid! My sisters are my brothers! I'm gonna go pee out a window! Wait, why is everybody holding vibrators? Okay, so what's the what's the last thing we see there? 
<laughs> Skyler's making a face because Bob's covered in spit. That is disgusting. Yeah, we forgot to mention that Bob's still dripping wet when he comes back into the. He brings his, his hair is like down his forehead. Yeah, um, I don't know why that makes me so. Ugh. It's, it's Every gross. time I see it. It's he- gross. Um, so the last shot is of outside the restaurant while they're having this party downstairs, and Gene appears in the ups the upstairs window, just in the window for a second, mm-hmm. just excited. Mm-mm. No, he's gonna pee out the window. Oh, he's peeing out the window. Yeah. So a frat boy, when the kids come back over, a frat boy's like, "I'm gonna go pee out the window," and Gene's like, "This is a thing you can do." Oh, so I miss that. He's he's uh, learned some lessons at good old college. Oh, great. And then it immediately cuts to, we're in the kitchen, our usual, our standard end credit sequence, except Louise and Tina are not helping Bob prepare burgers. Bob is just preparing burgers, and he's still dripping in spit, people spit, which cannot be sanitary. And it's like years old. Do you know how long it would take to store that amount of saliva from your patients? It's disgusting. It's disgusting. It's so gross. It makes me squirm. But what do we see in the service window? Let's let's take our focus off Bob's okay. unhygienic uh, burger preparation. Good point. So we, it's just a continuation from the last scene, like pretty much literally. So we have the- right. We talk about that, like what we try to find the time frame of when like these end credits might be taking place. Mm-hmm. This is very definitely right after. He doesn't um, take a they, shower, Max. He doesn't, Why doesn't well, he take a he's shower? He's got so many people. They want burgers. He promised burgers. They don't, he don't care. Have time. Yeah. Did you see that frat house? Yeah. Gene's pissing out the window out there, apparently. So it's not the most <laughs> like sanitary. Nauseous. Yeah. It's not the most sanitary place to be eating a burger this evening. Where's um, Huey? Howie? Howie? Who's <laughs> the inspector guy? Oh, Hugo. Where's Hugo. Where's Hugo when you need him? Hugo would have a field day if he walked in just now. It'd but be over. Maybe he'd be jealous because Gretchen's flirting with some college boys. They've yeah. Got, they've got their history, so he would be a little too... Um, jealous induced. Yeah, to care about what's going on with Bob. Um. Okay, but let's rewind. So there, the it's a continuation of the scene. So we have the frat boys dancing with the cougars who all still have the vibrators in their hands. Yeah. And they're just like doing a little dance. Now, tell us about the music, Max. So the music playing is, uh, the song is called Sneaky Pete. I think you said Stinky Pete earlier, but I think it's the, the name of the oh. vibrator is Sneaky Pete. That's that makes me feel a little I guess bit better. Bo- both, yeah, both kind of work, but yeah. Sneaky Pete's a little, um, a little sexier. More, you'd be more willing to purchase, I think, Sneaky Pete over Stinky Pete. Yes. Um, maybe it depends how good you are at cleaning. Uh, uh-uh, let's no? just okay. keep going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so singing in the background <laughs> is, I guess, are you flustered? I'm flustered. Singing in the background is, um. He's freaky, 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 sneaky Pete. He's uniquey, neaky, neaky, sneaky Pete. Make you shrieky, 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 sneaky Pete. So sneaky. He's Pete and he's freaky, 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 sneaky Pete. There's all like some some version of that. That's what's going on in the background. And I think the people singing are like a bunch of Ken Jeong who does Dr. Yap, uh-huh. John Roberts, Linda, Kristen Shaw, uh, Louise, Eugene Merman, Jean, H. John Benjamin, Bob... Um, Lauren Bouchard, the creator, oh Nora my gosh. Smith, who's one of the writer directors, I think. Um, so they they needed a bunch of people singing the song, so I guess just that's, grab a bunch of people. Yeah, that's who's singing. So that's what's going on in the background. So and it's so a, you know, this is doesn't play in the episode from my memory. So this was written for the credits. Yeah, I think so. I think it's just playing in the at this party. Yeah, but so that's it, what I'm saying. Oh, oh no, it start in the episode yeah i think it's in the party when they kind of like come in it's already playing but i'm not sure and then <laughs> and then it's definitely in the credits here okay i'm not quite sure who produced the song that's like in, in the world the, and then we <laughs> put it on the stereo at bob's credit at bob's burgers <laughs> yeah you know it's it's uh it's a jingle that maybe wrote for this commercial this sex toy commercial that okay. you might see like late night when okay. you're watching like um, Law and Order reruns. 
Yes. And this is when they're like, oh, it's 1 a.m. This person's watching mm-hmm. Law & Order reruns. It's probably safe to put on a sex toy commercial because mm-hmm. there's no kids around at this point. Mm-hmm. But just in case there are kids, let's make it like a a, little, a cartoon jingle. Yeah. Um, okay, now wow. I get it. The hurdles we had to jump <laughs> to explain that. Should we watch more of these credits? Yeah. So we've got like, a, I think that's Hefty Jeff dancing in the window at this moment. He's my favorite. Let's see what else happens in these okay. credits. Does Bob take a shower? No, he does not. So we're seeing, <laughs> so we're seeing all of these uh, people dancing by these characters we've seen in this episode. We also saw like a hair flip, which I appreciated. There was a great hair flip, and yeah. then we also see cute little Louise bunny ears bouncing. She's actually jumping She's around hopping. like a bunny. Yeah. But there's like also people are like holding the like sex toys and flopping them around too. It's thanks for using that word. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just want to. They're not like necessarily like. Um, some of the the sex toys are more flaccid than some of the others. Okay. So that there was one like that was going around. It was a little more like rubbery flinging. You know. I do know. Okay. Thank you. Now we got Gene hopping by too. Okay, so Jean does like a jump. Are they jumping? Are they... Pers- Why are they pers- hopping? Why is know. everyone hopping? Tina's not. Tina Tina's walks by and is Very just- Tina-esque. Yeah. She probably still has the underwear that she found at the frat house on. Because you can't see... Yeah. Does she come to the front at the end of these credits? I don't think so. I, I think she still has the undies on. Why would she take those off? If Bob Ever. didn't shower, she's not taking the underwear off for any reason. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Um, we get Linda dancing in the, in the window. And then the kids come back around and you, they're in between the booth and the counter. Oh, they are? They are, uh, the bunny ears. I saw Louise go by. Louise went back? I saw that. Let's see here. No, that's Gretchen's outfit. No, hold on, hold on. There she, no, hold on. There she is. Oh, you're right. Yeah, Louise is still is bouncing the background as what else ha- happens right in front of the screen. Does the shaved-headed Dr. Yap slide in? He slides in because I think last we saw him, he was on the run. Oh. So he's being chased still, I guess, and I guess he's now ended up in the restaurant, and he is dancing. He sees the camera, and he addresses it, breaks the fourth wall, and starts mm-hmm. dancing for it. Now, what what's the guy on Simpsons that he looks like with his shaved head? Uh, he looks like a lot of Simpsons characters. Okay, never mind then. Yeah. yeah. I, don't know, I don't know in the, particular who you're thinking of. The stubbly hair. It's very Simpsons-esque. He's very Simpsons. Sim- yeah, all right, let's 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 see him. He's in his little tux from the banquet. He's just moving his hands around and shaking his soldiers. Oh, we have the like dead arm thing. Yeah, like the robot. The hit robot the, arm. Yeah, dangling arm move. I want to go home with you, you bitch. I grew up and lived there forever. <laughs> and there's, there's the <laughs> sneaky Pete voice, I guess. Yeah, l- that Linda used to sell to that girl who'd just been broken up with. Yeah. I want to go home with you and live in your bedside drawer. What did she say? Forever. <laughs> forever. <laughs> that scene think? made me so uncomfortable. It's the un- baby talk was so weird. <laughs> the fact that that's what sells the toy is just, uh, okay. That's all she wanted was someone sweet to love her forever. And she's going to get it with Sneaky Pete, apparently. So those are the end credits to uh, My Big Fat Greek Bob. Mm-hmm. Highlights, lowlights. I'm not feeling it. You're not feeling it? Mm-mm. Okay. My highlight is just that I like to see these that these two worlds, that this two like completely weird, like, separate storylines coming together yeah. for this kind of like final moment satisfying and celebration in in the restaurant. Yeah. Um low light is Bob. It grosses me out. So it's, you don't think it's funny like I, you think it's grosser than it is funnier. Yeah, there's something about it that's just like the it the spit is so well drawn on him that it looks yes, very like, like you could it's thick. It's translucent yeah. and like goo like. Yeah. I I mean all credit to the animators. They did their job. It's yeah. it's great. It's we can tell it's spit over just like him being wet. A hundred percent. But it makes me sick. Agreed. And then also like again, I, I mentioned that 
Dr. Yap is not my favorite. And for him to come in at the end, it's like, I was almost happy that he wasn't in it. And then he pops and then he in. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let me let me throw this at you then. Okay. okay. So were these end credits better than the episode itself? No. It's tough. It's tough. Again, because I like most of the episode until it gets too Dr. Yap heavy. And the credits are fun. Like, I love the song. It's very catchy. Mm-hmm. Um, I really appreciate when they put a song in that unless you're really paying attention, it's, you know, us getting to like really analyze these credits and like dig into the lyrics and dig into the name of the song and see that it's related to what's going on is great. Yeah, because this is a great example. We have seen these credits three times now and neither of us knew it was a song about one of the storylines from the episode. Like we had to like research it. So it's yeah, not like spot. obvious. Right. Don't tell them that. Oh, sorry. We didn't do it on the spot. <laughs> the magic of editing. <laughs> it sounds like we knew it right away. Yeah. Um, I'm just sitting here thinking about next week's episode. You know? As far as... Like, so you're getting ready to score here. And you're holding that. No. Of, oh. It's like I'm on a date with this episode. And I just... All I'm thinking about is it's, next week's credits. You want to, you want to, you're, you're on a, you're at to, out to dinner with this week's episode, but you want to go spend the night with next week's episode. Yeah. This is hamburger and steaks at home. Yeah. But this is Bob's burger. So maybe we got steaks. Yeah. A badly cooked steak right now. And Impossible. one of Bob's best burgers <laughs> to get to. Yeah. So okay. I'm just well, gonna... well, that let's, uh, let's get into scoring these credits. Okay. We score on a scale of one to ten H's at the end of Tina's uh. <laughs> Skyler. You've I don't been very think vocal I should, about I don't, it. I don't think I should go first. I think you should. I give it, well, the song ups it, so I'll give it a seven. Oh, wow. You went higher than me. I'm just like too nice. Like anything in life, I give people three extra points for anything. I understand, and I want to continue to say that all of these end credit sequences are phenomenal we love them yes. to death we just need to score for this podcast that's how it works so <laughs> that being said i'm gonna give it a six h's and that's mostly the song with a little bit of like with a little bit of the dancing um, it does make you want to dance it does and yeah. Bob grosses me out, but I appreciate the reference to the episode and what was going on. And I do appreciate that it's like happening right. It's an extra scene in the, in the episode. Yeah, that I like that. And he also mentions like I he was supposed to be cooking for these frat boys. So I'm like a sucker for hosting. So like the fact that he Bob gets to make all of these burgers for these people. Like I feel like he couldn't even go shower. He was so excited. I feel like that's him and his happiest. So He's been telling like buddies, that. yeah, they yeah. love they love his food, and he's like, "I got a restaurant, come on in." Yeah, you know, this is a good day for nothing, Bob. Yeah, nothing's gonna stop us. You know, sex toy party. I'm covered in spit. It doesn't matter. We're getting these burgers done. Yeah, appreciate you, Bob. So there you have it. Thank you, everyone, for listening this week. Follow us, as I mentioned, on Instagram and Twitter. Bob's credits. Support us on Patreon. patreoncom slash credits. And leave us a review. Please. Please. We'd, we'd love you for it. Um, pay attention on our Instagram because there could be a fun giveaway coming soon. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited for this. Mm-hmm. So excited. Or it could be... Honestly, I don't... It depends when this episode goes up. But just keep an eye on our Instagram. Yeah. And if it's happened already, we'll have another one. Don't worry. Yeah. But you should just be on there is what I'm saying. Just wait. Yeah. On our page. Just sit there. Yeah. <laughs> and don't, because you don't want to miss it. Exactly. Don't do anything else. Yeah. Um, Skylar, anything else you want to tell the lovely folks at home before we get out of here? I'm just going to say, stay naughty. Oh, I was, I was scared you were going to say like, stay like spitty Spit or like stay no. s- sloppy. Sla- stay. Sloshy. Oh. Floppy. Floppy. <laughs> okay. That's enough of that.